How's it going? Great to see you guys. I love that you overestimated my height. Thank you. I can bring that right down. Beautiful. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, public square, public SQ. It's a little purple square in the App Store, Google Play. We should be the first thing that shows up if you search public square, the public square, public SQ. You can also find us at publicsq.com. That's a great place to get started. We're available on website and iOS and Android. So no matter what device you got, we got you covered. But I'm very grateful to be here from San Diego, California. Made the long trip out to Knoxville, Tennessee. And the first person I was greeted by last night in the airport at 1 a.m. was this very charming, friendly southern man with a very deep accent. And it was wonderful. I loved it. At 1 in the morning, this guy was cheerier than most Californians at noon. And that was really, really wonderful. So I'm grateful for southern hospitality. My wife's actually from Birmingham, Alabama. Roll Tide. I apologize to all of you who don't win as much as we do. But... <clears throat> Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm really honored for the invite. And I was excited about even kind of the prompt of the purpose of this weekend. And I even love the title of this. I love that there's laughter in the title. I think our movement has to be hopeful and joyful. And if it's not, no one's going to listen to us. In fact, I went to a, an event once in D.C. where I spoke. This was about four months ago. And there were all these congressmen and women there and all these kind of high-profile speakers. And I was one of the speakers. I had 11 minutes. It was oddly specific. So I got up. And I was going to talk for 11 minutes. And the guy who went before me had just finished 40 minutes on why you all need to build a doomsday bunker in your basement. <laughs> I'm all for doomsday bunkers. That's fine. And honestly, I think you should be prepared. I think there's beauty in pepper preparation, that we should be prepared for the worst but hopeful for the best. But the minute that your preparation starts to steal your joy, you need to take a pause. You need to breathe for a second. The kingdom is made up in righteousness, peace, and joy. The minute you forget those three is when you're out of alignment. Life's too short. You've got to be hopeful. You've got to be joyful. We're facing a lot of tyranny, a lot of chaos, globalist empires that are trying to eradicate the individuals that you hold dear. But we are going to face them with a joyful resilience, smiling every step of the way because we know that our king reigns victorious, ultimately. Amen? Amen. Sweet. I didn't plan to say any of this, but felt fitting because of the charming southern man that gave me lots of smiles last night when I landed at the airport. Uh, also, you could see the reality juxtaposed between kind of a progressive worldview that has rotted away at someone's brain and yet this happy, joyful, conservative ideology over here. Because when I landed last night, I got off the plane and there was a very famous actress. She's a com comedic actress. He told me her, last, her name last night, but I don't even remember it now. But she's in all these kind of raunchy, progressive Hollywood movies. And she wore a mask that sucked her face so hard. I mean, you, you couldn't think she could breathe. It was heartbreaking to watch. And she wouldn't get near people. And she was kind of skittish and like this. And then this southern guy just walks right up to me, shakes my hand, and takes me to the rental car spot. You just saw these two worlds juxtaposed with one another. And you realize that like worldview matters so deeply. And there's no neutrality left. Like You're either joyful about the future, or you're just a despotic sort of dystopian mess that's falling in line with whatever the powers of the day want you to say and believe. You're either excited about the opportunity to live in an age where you can love and serve your neighbors and be excited about the brotherhood of man that can take place that will save this country or you can just kind of fall away into either woke ideology and be a part of the problem or complacent which is almost just as worse and so it was neat because right as i landed last night i saw these two worlds and i just was like man i want to be a part of yours whatever you're doing whatever you're believing turns out he was a believer i want to be a part of that really really cool so the joy of the lord let it be your strength I have a tattoo on my arm. It says, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My flesh and my emotions may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. <laughs> if the joy of the Lord ceases to remain my strength, I've missed it. And so I'm going to tell you about a really joyful movement today, but first I'm going to tell you about some chaos that's happening in our country. The left is really good at infiltrating. I'm very political by nature because I believe politics is the study of people and how people organize. So when people say, oh, I hate politics, it's like, okay, so you don't care how people are organized? You don't care about the betterment of the polis? How can you say you deny politics but want to serve people? Those two don't 
I've done that up. And so I've always been intrigued by politics. I grew up reading people like John Locke, and I was intrigued by this concept of a public square and the concept of individual rights in a communal setting, how that can even work, because the American experiment was new to the world. Nobody had ever seen it demonstrated at this level before. And so watching these thinkers that influenced it was my whole childhood. I was so intrigued by these people. I'm not very smart. I just love to read, and I love to ask a lot of questions. So I would ask a lot of questions of people that seemed intrigued by people like John Locke and Thomas Paine, and they would refer me these resources and I would learn incredible ideas and philosophies that were rooted in something far deeper than the individual mind can comprehend. They were rooted in biblical truth. And then I started to learn that, holy cow, the American experiment was rooted in biblical truth. The United States Constitution was written in biblical truth. These ideas came from somewhere. They were influenced by something. And the left, since the beginning of the left as an ideology, they have sought to tear down and eradicate those fundamental principles, not just because they hate the Constitution and they don't value humanity in the same way that a Christian conservative might. They do it because they actually cannot stand God. They want the state to be all-powerful, and they want you to answer to the state. And any God that comes in and actually supersedes the state is a threat to their concept of hierarchical power. So I've been intrigued. And growing up, I witnessed a lot. And one of the things I witnessed is that as the left was on a path to infiltrate, they would often choose these mediums that the right had sort of abdicated responsibility from. So they went after the education system. Because who wouldn't trust the United States public education system? We sent our kids to school in the 90s and the early thousands and even before that in the 80s and it was sort of classic Americana. They get dropped off at the bus and they drive to school and they enjoy their recess and they're getting scraped up on the playground and they're eating snacks that are terrible for you and it's just fun though and you had this passion about Friday night football games and the left sees that and they see classic Americana and what gives you hope about this future and they saw, saw 40 years ago with tools from people like Saul Alinsky, if you you've never read Rules for Radicals, I highly recommend you do because it's basically a playbook for what the left has done today. They saw all of that classic Americana displayed through the education system and they went after it to tear it down. Now today, if you send your kids to public school, you're not sure if they're going to show up with uh, a month later, blue hair, earrings everywhere and calling themselves ridiculous things like they or them. It's heartbreaking. And often it's due to no fault of their own. They were thrust into a system, an environment that's so powerful with activists as teachers. The left has gone after uh, the, the, uh, the world of sports. They've gone after the world of entertainment. These things that we used to hold dear, they wanted to rip down. Because the left never builds anything. They only pervert and distort. That's it. Name me one classic Americana thing that we can be proud of that brings us together as a country that the left invented. Nothing. The ideology of communism, socialism, and Marxism desires only to eradicate and to remove because they see anything that allows for someone to be a joyful human being as it must be something that's privilege-based rather than an internal choice I get to make. Some of the happiest and most joyful people I know are also the people in the most poverty. Our internal choice to be joyful is what leads to joy. The left doesn't see that. They see hierarchical structures as the answer to happiness, joy, peace, prosperity, because they don't have a deeper worldview that would assert that happiness depends on what's happening. Joy is the deep, settled confidence that I have a God who loves me, who sees me, who knows me, who's sovereign in all of his ways. That ideology leads to human flourishing because regardless of my circumstances, I'm going to choose a deeper joy. The left doesn't get that. So they've tried to find joy in these dystopian ideas of what a utopia could potentially look like if their ideas were carried out to their fullest fruition. I live in California where their ideas have been carried to their fullest fruition. Pray for me. It's a mess. And don't think you're safe from it here in Tennessee. This morning, I was at a coffee shop that's on the Public Square app. I highly recommend you check it out. It's called Mahalo Coffee in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'll tell you more about Public Square in a second. But next door, there's a bookstore. And the bookstore has trans, queer, gay, flags, everything all over the walls. They are on a mission to distort the very places we hold dear. You may think you're safe in a southern city, but let me remind you, in Birmingham, Alabama, during COVID, I was kicked out of the Apple Store for not wearing a mask. The Carlsbad, California Apple Store let me in the same week without a mask. You're not safe from this. So goes California, so goes the nation. Wherever California is, you can basically assume the rest of the country will be there in 10 years. That's been the rule. Let me tell you another, about another area that the left has sought to distort. And this is the one I'm most passionate about, the marketplace. They recognize that if you wanted 
to thwart the power structures of society, just move where the money goes. And you can also deduct that if you want to understand how society's decisions are being made, look at where the profits flow. We sometimes assume that our politicians are like these pure ideologues that really believe what they're saying. Sometimes that's true. Other times it's, that's where the money led. Nancy Pelosi is going to say whatever allows her to buy another refrigerator. <laughs> Remember that? Let them eat cake, Nancy Pelosi. But the reason they went after this is because they knew that if you could actually shift the purchasing power of Americans toward companies that would embrace their globalist ideals, that that's the way that they'd win the culture war. And honestly, it worked. I remember driving by um, a Starbucks, gosh, 10 years ago, and Starbucks, the Starbucks in St. Louis, Missouri, had pride flags everywhere in the window. And that was before they added all the new colors. Um, it was the OG pride flag. But I remember driving by and looking at this pride flag and thinking, my goodness, like, what an odd thing for a business to do. This is so strange. And at the same time, I noticed that the companies that were on the right, that were a little bit more conservative, Christian run, were flourishing strongly. I remember I drove by a Chick-fil-A in 2014, two years later. It was a Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. and I drove by the Chick-fil-A and there was a line two hours out the door. 11 a.m. It wasn't even Chick-fil-A breakfast. I was blown away. And I pull over and I Google what's happening at Chick-fil-A today. It was National Protest Chick-fil-A Day. You remember this? What was funny is that the two-hour line out the door of the Chick-fil-A, they weren't protesters. There were maybe five protesters. And they were sitting there just with their signs up, looking just nauseating, just like this. There were five protesters saying that we hate Chick-fil-A stance on marriage or whatever the angry thing was that day. The two-hour line out the door were consumers. People that loved Chick-fil-A, that felt honored and seen and heard by the fact that they took a stance in the market. I wish they were still as strong today. But I can say that their new CEO, who just took over this year, uh, he's, he's a good one. He's going to stand for us. Praise God. But I remember looking at that and thinking, wow, there's two worlds being created here. Because I see the Starbucks over here that's got the pride flags everywhere, and I see the Chick-fil-A that's flourishing, that's got a line two hours out the door. Like, the economy's starting to split. This is becoming a new battleground. The left's been working at this for decades. They wanted to court corporate boardrooms into their ideology so that they could advance it in the public square. That's why Disney has been on a woke rampage for 10 years. It's just we only noticed it last year. If you look back to some of the decisions that Disney has been making for the last 10 years, you'll see that they've been on a vendetta. There's a strong ideological agenda that guides that company. And then you saw the emergence of ideologies like ESG and DEI. You guys ever heard of ESG? Environmental social governance. It's an investment philosophy and it's an um, operating philosophy that guides many businesses in terms of how they allocate resources and capital. They spend money on environmental, social, and governance issues, meaning more diversity on your boards, more trans people on your boards, all that type of stuff. In California, there was a bill that just almost got passed. Praise God that it didn't. Uh, but the bill basically said that if you want to be a publicly traded company that's based in California, you have to have an equal amount of women, gay people, and straight people, and trans people on the board altogether. It has to just be this hodgepodge of diversity or else it can't be publicly traded. So they've built and they've grown and they've grown and they've grown and they've creeped and they've gotten in. Starbucks, they do it to consumers too. Uh, which, by the way, before I move on, ESG is Environmental Social Governance. You all know what DEI stands for? Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. It means if you look at Bank of America today, Chase, any of the major corporations you shop from, Nike, Starbucks, they all have a diversity, equity, and inclusion policy that talks basically about how they're going to view their customers through the lenses of race. It has led to things like Yelp, the most popular business directory in the country, deciding to give free advertising to people based upon the color of their skin. It's incredibly racist. Violation of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but they don't care. If you're black, in February, you get free advertising on Yelp. If you're white, screw you. That's honestly what they believe. So you're seeing this happen in corporate boardrooms, and it's dwindling down into the business experience, and then it dwindles down into the consumer experience. Starbucks, did you know this? In 2018, they came out and announced that they would be matching employee donations to Planned Parenthood. So not only was Starbucks going to give their money to Planned Parenthood, they were going to encourage you to give your money to Planned Parenthood as an employee, and they'd match you like a freaking 401k. I agree, baby. <laughs> it is worth screaming about. 
It makes me so frustrated. Again, I'm joyful. See the smile? <laughs> joyful resilience in the face of tyranny. Amen. You've got to smile so you don't just wallow in misery. Matching employee contributions to Planned Parenthood. Evil on display like we've never seen in the corporate world. Seventh generation, largest household cleaning product company in the world, came out last year and said, we are committed to defunding the police. Like table spray. And that's what they're focused on. The list goes on. Postmates, you guys familiar with Postmates? They're kind of like Uber Eats. Postmates in Southern California, where I live, just this past Pride Month in June, released an entire campaign, and I'll be sensitive about how I say this because I know there's some younger ears in the room. They released an entire campaign about what types of foods and which restaurants you should eat from in Southern California that were friendly to your stomach before engaging in uh, same-sex intercourse. Agreed. <laughs> it's awful. These companies are on a rampage ideologically to try to thwart the American consumer to supporting their ideals. And the list goes on and on. There's a local coffee shop. It's not just affecting big corporations. There's a local coffee and bakery chain in San Diego, California. They've got seven locations. And during COVID, after the George Floyd stuff went down, they came out and they said, we refuse to serve any more police officers for the entire month of June. We're standing in solidarity with the activists. So we witnessed a police officer try to walk in, and they meant it. So no, nope, no, nope, sir, turn around. Sorry, we're not having you here. It's really wild what's happening. Bank of America canceling conservatives solely because of their political views. You've probably witnessed that recently, that many conservative activists, people like James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, Mike Lindell, they're getting their bank accounts removed from them. Salesforce, the largest CRM in the world, came out last year. The CEO said, I am the most anti-conservative company in the country. He claimed himself that way right before deleting Project Veritas from their existence. Chase Bank called us when we were just getting started. We had one small account with them, and we had done some prospecting conversations on the early end trying to figure out if they'd cancel us. And Chase Bank, in the very early days of our company formation, came out and said, you know what, uh, we're, we're not comfortable with your political views. Within a week, we diverted, we got away, we moved our money out. Now we have an amazing, freedom-loving, patriotic, liberty-minded, Christian-owned bank called Axos that does all of our corporate banking. Highly rec recommend you look them up, A-X-O-S. Tell them Public Square sent you. They're good people. Run by a CEO who is a believer, who loves his country, who loves his freedoms that he holds dear, and loves the families that those freedoms are designed to protect and serve. Phenomenal. So that's all the bad stuff. You guys getting a picture of what's happened in the economy over the last decade? Yeah? It's wild. Here's what it means. There's no room for neutrality anymore. There are some people that are in this fight too that are with me, that stand side by side with me, that agree with me in terms of our own personal values. But one area that we differ is they believe neutrality can still be possible. They believe that utopia will be achieved if businesses just kind of all come back to the middle and stop talking about their values. I actually disagree. I think we're well past that point. I think neutrality is dead, to be honest with you. I think the left started this deal where we all had a common goal for a while and then they broke the agreement. Now we're at a spot where neutrality is not really a thing. You kind of choose. Where do I sit on things? The last two years, COVID put out a big, blaring, illuminating spotlight on the world to make consumers like us choose. Where do you line up? Made businesses choose. God bless business owners in this room. You had to choose. Do I serve my consumers and cherish their freedoms? Or do I listen to this government that's trying to shut me down? In California, we dealt with that. I walked into an ice cream store and they said, sir, can I see your vaccine card? Wild. And I'm not vaccinated. So I said, no, I don't have that. And that's stupid. You're really not going to serve me ice cream? They said, nope. So I turned around and I walked out. Wild stuff. But for every bad story that there is of a company that's gone insane, there are 10 more that would love your business, that honor you, share your values, want to see the country that you want to create, love their country and love their God, and desire to actually embrace their values in their marketplace experience. We had a coffee shop in San Diego, California called The Coffee Co. K-O-F-F-I-E Co. in Escondido, California. The day they announced they were pushing back against the government and they were reopening, they had a line uh, out the door, probably even longer than that Chick-fil-A line. I would say that the line was probably four hours long. And the craziest thing was uh, they had someone fly all the way from Sweden just to participate and support their coffee. Wow. How cool is that? 
Yeah. How's it going, guys? What is that you're drinking? Come on. Is that raw milk? Oh. <laughs> I was like, these guys really get it. They're just detaching from the system. I love it. That's so good. So friends, for every bad story, there's 10 more that are positive. Here's my message to all of you today. In this divergence that's taken place in the economy, where there's now a woke entity that is ruling the world in terms of commerce that seems that way, there is an even mightier patriotic movement that's rising up and saying, enough is enough. We've absolutely had it. Time to put our money where our mouth is, move our dollars toward the power structures of society shifting back toward we the people, and we are here for it. So the title of my talk was that, I think it was like, woke corporations are nauseating, but we have a solution. It's basically the essence of this today. I want more stories like the Chick-fil-A's. I want more stories like the Coffee Co's. Goya Foods, largest Latin American food provider in the United States. You ever heard of Goya? Yeah. Come on. CEO of Goya came out last year and he said, I'm voting for Trump. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, New York Congresswoman, came out and said, we should boycott him. Come on, Latinx community, let's boycott Goya. What ended up happening is that Goya had the most successful month of business they have ever had. Amazing. It was amazing. And the reason that happened is because you had an entire movement of people that said, I've never cooked a chalupa in my life, but I'm in. You had white women in Kansas that were going out and buying black beans. Solely because they finally felt like, yes, somebody sees me. Thank you. You know what happened next? The CEO of Goya Foods got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's picture, hung it in his hallway, and gave her Employee of the Month. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Joyful resilience. He said, AOC, anytime you want to lead a boycott against us, you be my guest, because you just blew us up. Thank you. So we were really inspired in January of 2021. I was visiting Florida, where my parents live and where most of my family is from, with my wife, and we were feeling desperate for a solution. Prayed to God desperately for a solution, and he deposited this idea of what if, what if there's a way that you could use technology to connect people that shared the same values that we're describing today, values for life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, values for a deeper meaning other than just themselves, and their momentary pleasures, deeper values than just carnal existence, but something far greater that binds us together. What if there was a way that you could connect people like that in a technological setting to be able to move their dollars toward the companies that don't hate them? Like, how cool would that be? I used Yelp for a long time. I stopped when they started being very publicly woke. But I was one of the super users. And one of the things I was always frustrated about with Yelp is that they never really had an ability to make the commerce experience social. But social commerce is the future. People want to know the values that a business holds dear. That is the market today. 30 years ago, it was just tell me whatever's cheapest and quickest. I'm sorry to tell you, but that ideology failed us. It led to us selling our soul to countries that hate us for our manufacturing. While people like my uncle are out of jobs in Ohio when they used to have sturdy manufacturing jobs. It's how Trump got elected in 2016, is because he preached this message. We thought, what if you could communicate through a piece of technology that message, an America first message, a value centric message toward the American marketplace that is very values driven today, that wants to know the face of the brand, that wants to know the values that the company holds dear so that they're not inadvertently funding something that absolutely acts in opposition to their worldview. What if you could create that? What if you made it free? What if businesses and consumers could alike join together in this endeavor in a way that's profound and completely revolutionize the way we do local community? Prayed for a solution and God gave us Public Square. It's amazing. My wife and I came back home and we just dove deep into trying to figure out how this would work and put it on a product map and tried to understand who would we talk to and where would we go and what questions would we ask and how would we get started and where would I raise money and all these things. January had the idea of 2021. February reached out to a few friends who knew what the heck they were talking about, brought them in a room and said, this is my dream. March, we started raising money for the dream. By April, I had opened an actual formal fundraising round. By June, I had raised $1.8 million from like-minded investors that said, we're all in. This is the future. May, we launched a product roadmap and started writing lines of code to be able to put this app into existence. By July, we had a prototype done. September, we launched our limited release 
soft launch in San Diego, California, and there were only 150 businesses on the app. It was just San Diego County. We had 2,000 users, and it was fantastic. Dennis Prager spoke at our launch event and commissioned us off to spend money in alignment with our values. In November, we spread out to all of California. In the new year, March 7th, we began to expand around the nation. July 4th, I can tell you that our platform on iOS, Android, and web is now in all 50 states, so as of about 12 weeks ago. And today, we're the largest network of patriotic businesses and consumers the world has ever seen, and we are just getting started. We have 30,000 businesses on the platform. Thank you. Praise God, honestly. We have 30,000 businesses on the platform, hundreds of thousands of consumers, hits every day to the site from people who are just desperately looking to move their dollars toward their values. It's phenomenal to witness, and we're just getting started. Our average consumer is a 37-year-old woman with kids, mama bear. Praise God for the mama bears. Are you a mama bear in this room? Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Make a majority of daily purchases for the household. Understand what's on the line because the little kiddos. Thomas Paine said, if a battle may come, if a war may rage, let it be in my day so that my children may know peace. Adults in this room, if you want to deflect and you want to say, well, that sounds convenient, but I'm going to keep doing things how I'm doing. That sounds cool, and it's nice to know there's one bank out there, but I don't know. I'm not really willing to move much of my purchases. I really hate my company, and they're totally woke, but I'm, and I'm kind of contributing to it by continuing to stay employed here, but I just don't really, you know, I don't need to look for other options. If that's the position you're taking, recognize Proverbs 3.9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth. If you have choices and you're not exercising them to move money away from this empire of man that's been created to thwart away the generations after you's rights, you're complicit. It's true. I fund what I can expect. I endorse what I fund. Whatever I put my money toward is what I'm basically saying I support. Now, that's not always true. Paul's also very clear that if you're eating meat toward idols and that's not, you know, there's not really another option, that's okay. But if there's another option and I'm looking at the two and I choose the one that's woke because it's convenient, how do I justify that, right? And here's the problem. Your kids are going to have to deal with it. So let me reiterate again, Thomas Paine, if a battle may come, a war may rage, let it be in my day so that my children may know peace. That's what valiance looks like, joyful resilience, a resistance to the tyranny, to create a new system, one that works for all of us. So that my daughter, who, by the way, we're expecting our first child in three weeks. Amazing. Can't wait. Praise God for my wife for even letting me be here. Uh, <laughs> Because we're only three weeks for the due date. And I have a sense that she may be coming a little early too, so we'll see. But all of a sudden, the battles become very personal. What used to be very macro has become very micro. If you're a parent in this room, you know better than I do what I'm talking about. And so what does it look like to say I'm moving my lifestyle towards something that I can tell my grandkids about one day had an impact in changing the country for the better, that got the woke entities of the world to crumble into the sea and raised up the entities that support the lifestyle that we want to create. A few stories. What's wild is that we went from, again, nothing, six guys in a garage, literally we were in a garage, to now almost... 35 staff members and incredible opportunities to experience growth in ways I never would have dreamed. This is exciting. You can be looking out for this the second half of October. Donald Trump Jr. is now on our board of directors, and he'll be publicly announcing that. The Trumps have gotten behind this, which I'm very grateful for. People that I've respected for a long time, like Ted Cruz. Marco Rubio's wife is one of our biggest fans. She uses the app all the time, and we didn't even tell her about it. It's so neat to watch how this has gone from grassroots, how this was birthed, to the highest levels of power in the land on our side because people recognize we need a new economy. We need a parallel system that'll supply for amazing shows like Cross Politic to get funded by like-minded sponsors, that will provide for the coffee shops like Mahalo to get funded and increase their profits in a technologically advancing world where Starbucks is winning. We had an office supplier reach out. They just supply office goods to small businesses in Alabama. He said, man, I'm really struggling. I'd love it if you can help me. We brought him onto the app. Two weeks later, he had four new clients that made up for a year's worth of losses for him. He had a free profile on an app. If you give people an option, they'll take it. So our ask to consumers has been, help us build this. We're just getting started. We're birthed in grassroots activism, but we have big dreams for how this actually begins to really take over the American economy. Imagine if every dollar you spent went to companies that liked you. 
The shirt I'm wearing, company that likes me. The pants I'm wearing, company that likes me. Even the underwear I'm wearing, not that you need to know that, but company that likes me. <laughs> the bank I bank from, company that likes me. Doesn't hate my values. You know the, the reason the Jewish community is so successful? The Jewish community is one of the most successful demographics in the United States because on average, a dollar touches the Jewish community eight times before it ever leaves. It's amazing. They support their own. Nigerian American community, one of the most successful communities in the United States. You know why? Because they spend money with each other. Taiwanese American community, one of the most successful in the country. You know why? Because they find the Taiwanese American owned business first before they go elsewhere. That's how Christians need to mobilize in this season. Stop giving your money to tyrants that hate you. It will be inconveniencing for a while, but I promise you, the more that tools like ours emerge, the more like tools like Red Balloon emerge, the more like tools like the vicinity capital emerge, the better off and the more we're going to be able to actually start moving the needle. It's hard to get rid of an iPhone, right? But that doesn't mean I shouldn't start somewhere. You may say, well, it's really hard to get rid of my car, of course. I don't know who makes good, classic, virtuous, righteous cars. Like, right? There's not really anybody that does that. Even Tesla, which is the most American-made car in the country, is still preaching the ESG message, and they fund abortions. It's hard to get away from some of those massive consumer products, but here's what I can promise you. You'll never be able to unless you start somewhere. But here's my dream. What if 5 million Americans that were on Public Square said, you know what? We're going to stop going to Starbucks because I found a better local option. What if 5 million public square members said, I don't need to go with that insurance provider anymore because I found a better option? All of a sudden, you're going to notice that we're chipping away at the globalist dream of all of these global stakeholders coming under this woke ideology. And instead, we're going to be able to really push back. Because you know who starts to really pay attention when you have 5 million people that just left as a primary customer base? Starbucks. They'll start to say, we took a gamble on this woke thing and it didn't really pay off. We should probably revert course. The way you actually find any companies like that coming back to the middle is by creating a system over here where you just say, you know what, I don't even give a rip what Starbucks does anymore. We're going to go this way. We're going to create a hopeful, joyful future where you can be proud of your purchases. You can join us or not. Your choice. I'm going to go work for a company that actually likes me, that wants to serve my ideology and create the type of society that I want to create. You can join us or not. I'm going to invest my money with people like Vicinity Capital because there's opportunities at a local level that will strip money away from BlackRock and Vanguard and bring it back toward local communities flourishing. You can join us or not. That's the dream. The country starts to change. Can you feel it? It's amazing. Can you picture it? Can you imagine what happens if the business that you love dearly starts to take a stand in the public square and flourish because of it? If you're a business owner, and I'm going to finish with this, I'd encourage you as a business owner, lean into this. Sometimes there's a fear of like, well, what if I, what if I step up, step out, and I embrace, embrace the employee bill of rights, and somebody finds out, or I join Public Square, and somebody finds out, or uh, I just, I don't know, I don't know about taking a stand for this whole thing. I, I, I'm afraid of what might happen and the backlash I get from consumers. Here's what I can tell you resoundingly, and I mean this. If you're willing to press into this parallel economy that's being created, you are only going to be rewarded in profits. Because just like the story I told you with Goya Foods, that's happening in every single industry. We ran a 27-state market survey in March of 2021 when I was just getting started. Because before I went out and asked for $1.8 million, I had to make sure there was a legit market for this. And nobody had ever tried this before. We were the first entity to try to do this at scale. So I went out and we did a big mass survey and I said, how many of you conservative Americans from all different walks of life and socioeconomic statuses would spend 10% more or drive 10 minutes farther to spend every dollar in alignment with your values. You know how many said yes? Hundreds of people surveyed, 27 different states, all different backgrounds, 98% said yes. They will spend more with you. They will drive farther. Just let them know you're with them. You'll be blown away at the return. In fact, I actually had the honor to sit with someone who I deeply respect and have for a long time named Patrick Lencioni. Who's ever heard of Pat Lencioni? You ever heard of that name? A few hands? Cool. He's arguably one of the most wise business minds in American history. This guy is the personal coach of the Southwest CEO, Nordstrom CEO. He's worked with all the big companies. And Red Balloon and Public Square got to do sort of a joint session with him, Pat Lencioni, in Oakland or in uh, San Francisco Bay Area with him on this past Monday where we talked about company culture. And he made a bold assertion. He said, there's this lie that you need 100% of the market to find you desirable to see you successful. And just like my friend, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, but you have an awesome company. I'm excited to check it out. I want to join you to Public Square. 
But just like you just mentioned before I got up here, you don't need the whole market. Be honest about who you're trying to reach and you'll be blown away at the returns. I'll tell you this, Public Square is a $5 billion company if I get 12% of America to like us. Don't even have to use us. I just need 12% of the United States to say, that's a pretty cool idea. Even less than half of them to use us and we're a $5 billion company. Why? Because we're in a new era. Money follows values now. You can either jump in and you can capitalize on that. And people will call you lots of things. They'll say you're trying to sow into the division. No, you're not. You're trying to serve those who are with you. Your church needs help. Help them. Let them know you're there for them. Don't donate to abortion. Doesn't mean you have to donate to pro-life stuff, but make it known that you don't donate to abortion so that they stop doing that and they'll come to you. If you want to donate to pro-life stuff, even better. Yelp came out this past month and they said, we are giving $4,000 to every employee that wants an abortion. So what did I do? We came out and said, we're giving $5,000 to any employee that wants to adopt or have birth. It's really exciting. By the way, thank you. By the way, um, somebody who is rather antagonistic to us that knew that their CEO of this company was pregnant, well, not me pregnant, but my wife is pregnant, they're like, oh, you did this, so you could get $5,000. It's like, no, we're not taking the benefit, although we are the first uh, birthing employees at, at the company. <laughs> but we're not taking the benefit. There's a new market emerging. Seven Weeks Coffee, fantastic coffee brand, gives 10% of every sale to pro-life pregnancy centers. The reality is you can look at where the market is today and say, where is there not a consumer product that uh, is with us on our side? And how can I go create a solution that'll solve that? We're starting a diaper company. You know why? Because every diaper company is woke. So we're going to go out and start a diaper company that donates to pregnancy centers. Doesn't take much overhead capital. Pretty simple. A lot of them are actually made in the United States. You can create a really quality diaper. You can make sure that it's organic materials. And you can actually uh, create a cool logo for it, nice little company, set up a nice distribution channel all within the United States here, and sell it, give a portion of proceeds to pro-life pregnancy centers. Watch how good this thing does. So I'm really grateful to be talking with y'all because I know I'm preaching to the choir here. But what I can encourage you to do is do not be complacent. If a battle may come, and it is here, let it be in our day so that our children may know peace. Move your money toward the power structures of society, shifting back toward we the people. Recognize that your wallet carries volumes. It carries weight. It carries mass that can actually move a society. Recognize that the way we beat globalism in the end is by embracing nationalism and localism. Some of our developers are Armenian Christians, and I was on a call with them this morning. We do a quarterly call with our Armenian friends, and I got on the phone with them, and I said, guys, I'm really proud to be an American, and I hope you're proud to be an Armenian. The way the world wins is if we stop looking to the Klaus Schwab's and the one international monetary fund and the UN to solve all of our problems as one global collective. Americans, take care of yourselves. Armenians, take care of yourselves. If we do this, we're all going to be better off for it. Same deal here. Tennessee, keep Tennessee believing the truth. Do not follow the way of California. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to work on San Diego. Just like Andrew's going to go back home and he's going to work on Moscow. Just like Cross Baltic's going to go home and work on Moscow. Just like Vicinity Capital's going to go back and work on Greenville. We have to first take care of our local regions, then watch the nation change because of it. Take care of our nation, watch the world change because of it. And it all starts with the power of your dollar. Sound good? Yeah. Sweet. Friends, you can find us at publicsq.com or you can head to the App Store or Google Play and look us up. We would love for you to join us. Join the movement, add your business. It's totally free. We're never going to ask you for money. You can just browse. You can go to shop online, go to that tab, and you'll see thousands of businesses that'll serve you all over the country. Go to shop local and see if there's any businesses near you in your local region. We want to serve you. We want to support you. We want to show you that there are other options, 30,000 of them, and they're growing every single day. It's an honor to speak with you all. I'm super grateful for Cross Politic for having me. And it was also a blast to speak on the podcast a few months ago. So if you want to hear more about this in depth, you can go back and listen to that podcast because we talked about the importance of Christians supporting other Christians and truth believers with their dollars. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.